Attention, the following video tutorial is for explanatory purposes only and it does not in any way replace the installation and instruction manual provided. Installation of pistons on a Fiat Ducato 250 chassis. Ok, let's install the rear pistons on the Fiat Ducato 250 chassis. We have a plate that was designed and perforated to use the holes already available on the chassis at the leaf spring level. You can see the two side holes and the central one. The kit comes with all bolts, including washers and self-locking nuts. Moreover, you will receive an already threaded bracket, which we will insert into the chassis longitudinal member at the piston support level. First of all, we tighten the bolt below so that the plate adheres perfectly to the chassis. Then we tighten the two side bolts. Once the bracket is in the right position and it has been properly tightened, we position the piston by fixing it with a flange adapter, already welded to the body, thanks to the bolt supplied. A good rule is that the piston, after being fixed, is flush with the rear axle. The right piston is mounted in the same way as the left one. Front axle. Unlike the rear pistons, for the front pistons we have two different conditions on the right and on the left. In order to fit the right bracket, we will cut a thread and drill three holes. Now we will position the bracket and mark the three holes to be drilled. Once the three holes have been drilled, we will remove this rubber plug so that we can position this bracket, which was also supplied, inside at the level of the two holes. In the case of a Euro 5 engine, to mount the right piston we have to move the catalyst fasteners to the left in this way, using a lever. As you can see, the bracket has been placed in the most robust part of the chassis. Once the right plate has been positioned, we will position the left plate that, as we can see, is shaped differently to avoid the tank. In order to fix the left plate, we will have to remove this fastener to have a free surface and enable the perfect adhesion of the plate. Now let's place the plate that will serve as a template to mark the three holes.
Once the three holes have been drilled, we will remove the rubber plug on this side as well. In the same way, we will insert, as we did on the right, the already threaded bracket that was also supplied. At this stage, we prefer to pair the flange with its piston already on the ground, so that we do not have to loosen the tank too much. To mount the left piston, we have carried out the pre-assembly on the ground and loosened the tank just enough to fit it into the housing. Now we can start mounting also the right piston on the bracket. In order to properly mount the pipes, we will have to follow the instruction manual carefully. Now we will mount the feed pipe on the right piston. The other end of the pipe will be marked with the abbreviation C1, which we will find again on the control unit. Likewise, another feed pipe marked on the other end with the abbreviation C2 will be mounted on the left piston, as shown in the diagram. Now we will connect the return pipe from the right piston to the left one. After mounting the pipes, we will tighten the pistons in the highest possible position. As regards the rear pistons, we will fix the C3 feed pipe to the right piston and the C4 feed pipe to the left piston. Installation of the control unit. Once the pistons are fixed, let's see how to connect the pipes to the control unit that you can see here on the bench. Previously, we had marked the four feed pipes with the abbreviations C1, C2, C3 and C4 and the return pipes with the abbreviations R1 and R2. Now we will connect these pipes directly on the block, where we find the abbreviations marked at the level of the pipe connection. As far as the electrical part is concerned, we will connect the red marked cable with the protective fuse holder to the positive pole of the service battery, while the black marked cable will be connected to the negative pole of the ground at the most convenient point. The control unit supplied is already complete with a control panel with Bluetooth antenna, so that you can operate the system even from your smartphone app and with its remote control panel. Here we are on the vehicle where we have installed the control unit by placing it with a bracket at the base of the camper. All feed pipes, return pipes and electrical cables get here through a hole and then they are connected to the control unit, as explained before. The wiring, which starts from the control unit, must be connected to the control box equipped with Bluetooth antenna. From the box, the cable reaches the control panel that we will place in the camper. In the event of a vehicle electrical problem, however, we can remove the pistons by operating the pump manually. To do this, we have to unscrew all five plugs of the solenoid valves, remove the spacer washers and screw the plugs tight again. At this stage, we can operate the pump manually. Key recommendations In order to enable the system to operate, following actions must be carried out. Identify a closed car, protected from dirt and the weather, located in a fairly central position on one of the two sides of the camper. 
If you do not have a closed car or a double button suitable for positioning the pump, you can purchase the external kit for fixing the pump. Orient the control unit so that the manual emergency pump and the emergency releases on the solenoid valves are as practicable as possible and with a suitable range of action. Make sure that the tank hydraulic oil filler cap is also easily accessible. The power box should be positioned as close to the hydraulic unit as possible. Be careful, please follow the mounting instructions, since for the system to operate smoothly it is absolutely necessary to comply with the orientation and the direction of the box, as set out below. The caption front must be in the direction of travel of the vehicle. The box should be inverted, as indicated by the up arrow. Connect the D-plus power cord to the console for starting the vehicle to allow the automatic lifting of the pistons while trying to start the previously leveled vehicle. In many cases, the D-plus key is located on pin 15 of the general terminal board. Power the device only with a voltage of 12 volts directly from the engine battery with cables having a section suitable for the distance between the battery and the control unit, in accordance with the following chart.